What's up guys, my name is Michael. In this video, I want to talk about the iPhone 13 Pro camera because this camera has impressed me and it has just blown me away over the last uh, few weeks I've been using this new iPhone. So first off, the iPhone 13 Pro and the 13 Pro Max this year have the identical camera system. This uh, video is actually being filmed on an iPhone 13 Pro Max and uh, this is the normal size iPhone 13 Pro right here. Last year with the iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max, Apple had some differentiation between the camera systems. So the iPhone 12 Pro had a smaller main sensor and it didn't zoom in as much. This year, the iPhone 13 Pro and the 13 Pro Max have the identical camera system and every single camera got updated this year. The main wide camera now has a bigger sensor. The telephoto lens can now zoom in three times even though it lets in a little bit less light. And in my opinion, the biggest upgrade is the ultra wide camera, which now is a lot brighter and you can get a lot more uh, usable photos now with the ultra wide camera. So in this video, I wanna just talk about my overall experience with the iPhone 13 Pro camera because it has blown me away and this is the most fun I've ever had with an iPhone camera. So let's go ahead and get started. So like I said, there is a larger main sensor here on Apple's website. It says the wide camera captures up to 2.2 times more light. Obviously this is uh, compared to the iPhone 12 Pro uh, and then going to the 13 Pro because if you compared it uh, from the 12 Pro Max to the 13 Pro Max, the difference really isn't that big. And if you're going from a 12 Pro Max camera to a 13 Pro Max camera, I'd say that's the one situation where you might not need to upgrade. But even if you have a 12 Pro, going to the 13 Pro, uh, it's going to be a major upgrade. You're now getting sensor shift stabilization on the main lens, uh, along with every other iPhone 13 this year gets sensor, gets sensor shift stabilization. So what that means is instead of the lens being balanced, the sensor is actually being balanced uh, with tiny little magnets making micro adjustments a uh, thousand times per second, uh, or I think 5,000 times per second actually and uh, it can stabilize your video a lot better and it's better for very small micro vibrations. So if you're in an airplane or if you're at a concert with vibrations or if you're in a car, uh, video and photos are going to be a lot more stable and crisp. You can see just how big the camera bump here is on the iPhone 13 Pro. It's exactly the same on the Pro Max. It's almost comical how big this thing is. And it's only necessary for the wide lens because the sensor got bigger. The uh, telephoto lens and the ultra wide lens, I don't think they need to be bigger. And in fact, when it hits the light the right way, you can see through uh, this dark shading that Apple has. And uh, the lenses are actually kind of small. So the camera bumps are uh, bigger than they have to be for some of the cameras, but uh, that's just what Apple's doing, the uniform look uh, to get that pro camera look on the back of the iPhone. Whatever, it doesn't, really, it doesn't really bother me as long as the photos look good. And the photos do look good. They look really good. The wide camera captures a lot more detail, lets in a lot more light now. One thing I notice is when I'm shooting in low light, the phone doesn't go into night mode even close to as frequently. So if you wanna go into night mode, you have to enable it manually. So if I cover the sensor, you can see that night mode icon turns on on the top left there. I have to hit that every now and then if I want to go into night mode. Just because the sensor is letting in so much light, the phone doesn't think it needs to go into night mode and it honestly doesn't. So if you wanna force it to go into night mode, you can, but the sensor is now so bright that uh, it just doesn't need it and the, the capture time is a lot faster. With the ultra wide lens being upgraded now to a much wider aperture, I find I'm using the ultra wide lens in lower light now a lot more. The shots are a lot more crisp and I just feel like this ultra wide lens is a lot more versatile now. You can see some of the example shots on your screen right now. Another thing is the telephoto lens. So one tip here I'll give you in this video is when you tap the 3X button in the iPhone camera, you're not actually getting access to the telephoto lens. And this year with the iPhone 13 Pro, because the telephoto lens is letting in uh, not very much light, I believe it's f2.8, which for a smartphone lens, if you don't know, that's not very bright. It's not a very fast lens. So I would recommend using an app called Halide. So Halide lets you access the 3X lens all the time. So when you hit 3X in the bottom there, you're actually getting access to the 3X lens. When you do that in the camera app, you don't know if you're getting access to the 3X lens. So sometimes I've, uh, I've been on the street taking photos and I tap 3X, snap the photo, and then later I go and I look at the photo and I swipe up 
and I can see that it was taken with the wide camera because now in iOS 15 you have all this EXIF information here in photos and you can see what lens it was captured with and it'll say wide camera even though I zoomed in three times. That's because the lens doesn't let in a lot of light and the iPhone thinks that you're gonna get a better shot just using the wide lens instead of the telephoto. So you can use a third party app from the app store if you want to uh, force that telephoto lens uh, to turn on all the time. Another big upgrade this year is ProRes video for the Pro phones. Now, I really don't think many people are going to use this. I only think this is going to be like a 1% of the time feature uh, for very pro users uh, that shoot and record video for a living. So if you go into settings and then scroll down to camera and then tap on formats, you can see Apple ProRes. Now, because I have the 128 gig iPhone 13 Pro here, I couldn't afford anything more, I guess. When I open the camera, and go to video, you can see it says ProRes, but it's not supported at 4K. It's only supported uh, for 1080p at 30 FPS on the 128 gig phone. And if you have any more storage than 128 gigs, you can record ProRes 4K 30 frames per second. So even though I have the Pro phone, I don't think I'm going to be recording ProRes video that much. And even if I did have the 256 gig storage model or more, I still don't think I'd be recording ProRes video uh, simply because of the storage. Now, I don't want to record 1080p video, so I don't uh, I don't want that low of a resolution. If I record any ProRes video, it would I'd want it to be in 4K, and I just can't do it on this phone, but 4K ProRes takes up six gigs per minute. I'll say that again, six gigs per minute. So it kind of makes sense why Apple doesn't want you uh, filming uh, 4K ProRes on a 128 gig phone because this uh, storage could be filled up in just a few minutes of recording and you wouldn't really be able to get any uh, decent footage or any decent length of capture time at all. So uh, you're limited to 1080p 30 FPS but I still think the video that comes out of this, the compressed format is still high quality enough. I'm filming this with the 13 Pro Max using Filmic Pro. The bitrate is slightly higher than the uh, stock camera app, but it is not ProRes. And uh, you can tell right now from the quality of this video, it is uh, really high quality and the bitrate is high enough. If you're going to be doing a lot of editing, uh, post-production, and you wanna change the colors and the white balance and everything, shooting in ProRes definitely is worth it. And if you're doing client work and you're getting paid for your time to make and edit videos, I definitely recommend shooting in ProRes and get more storage. But if you're just buying the Pro phone because you want the best phone, don't think that ProRes uh, is a feature that you have to turn on to get the best video. Because honestly, the setting I would recommend for the best video is 4K60 with Dolby Vision HDR turned on and auto FPS turned on. So if I go here to record video, you can see 4K60 and then auto FPS. So if you are in a low light scenario, uh, your iPhone can automatically drop the frame rate of video uh, to make it look better in low light. So that's what I would recommend instead of ProRes. Uh, just keep in mind, if you're gonna take away one thing from this video, uh, ProRes doesn't really make your videos look better or sharper. It's more for people that really work in video for their living and they want that extra uh, expandability for editing the video. Think of it as uh, raw format, but for video. Another feature on this phone that I really don't use very often, I think I've taken one clip with it, is cinematic mode. So I like to record my videos at 4K and cinematic mode is capped at 1080p. Now the 1080p does look okay coming out of the larger sensor on the 13 Pro. However, cinematic mode for me feels like that first generation portrait mode from the iPhone 7. The edge detection just isn't that good when it tries to blur out the background artificially. I can just tell that it's a smartphone and when I'm racking focus from one subject to the other, it really tries to pull focus in a weird way and I can just tell that it's not coming from a, uh, a dedicated camera, obviously, because it's a smartphone. I don't want to sound like I'm complaining here. It's all done with software, but uh, I still think I'm going to wait uh, for maybe cinematic mode 2.0 until it's really fine tuned and especially until I can record in 4K because I can't do anything with 1080p footage right now. So it's a really cool uh, feature for some people, but I'm not gonna use it very often. So here to finish off the video, I just wanna go through a few things that will make you really think about this iPhone and what it can do. So 
This iPhone 13 Pro or Pro Max, let's say you got the one terabyte iPhone, you can record ProRes video, ProRes HQ at six gigabytes a minute. You can upload that footage using 5G. And before you upload it, you can also edit it on the phone as there are many editing apps on the App Store for iOS. So this can be a complete workflow device for you. You can shoot, edit, and upload all ProRes video. That is pretty damn impressive if I do say so myself. Apple did an amazing job with this iPhone and I think this is the first time ever that an iPhone is actually worthy of that pro name. So if you guys enjoyed this video and it was helpful, drop a like down below. Thank you for watching. My name is Michael and I'll see you in the next one.